Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. I am to the point where I'm thinking about binding this Poetic Rust junk journal that I've been working on. I've got, let's see, there's one set of pages, two, three, four, five, six. So it starts to get pretty thick when you use this kind of binding. And I do love this kind of binding. It also gives you room because of the way it's done to add flip out pages and such. So this journal is gonna get bigger, but I am thinking about binding it. Now this is the cover so far. Let me turn that. And I had put a crackle finish on there. I thought I might do a second coat, but I don't know if I will or not. There's something about that that I really like. Anyway, this is the cover, and what I think I'm going to do. Normally, I would have fabric completely covering the spine, but I love to see binding inside of an old book. And you know what I'm talking about when you take a cover off of a book and it leaves the, all of the, like the spines or the, out, the folds of the signatures are visible. And then you see the stitching running across. So I'm thinking about how I can do that. Mine's going to be, of course, different than what a book like that would look like, but it would still be the same effect if I could work it so that some of it shows. And I'm thinking about fabric strips that I could sew these two. In order to do that, I think the first thing I need to do is, I'm gonna cover the insides of these with either paper or fabric. I, okay, I'm kinda of thinking through this while I'm talking to you. If I had two fabric strips that I sewed the pages to instead of one piece of fabric, and left the strips so that I could glue them underneath whatever I put on the inside. The strips would be hidden on the inside, and then on the outside, we would have just two strips that we could see, and then all the pages running up and down. So let's, let's think about that, or let's, let's try to figure out how to do that. I would probably go ahead and take, this is the fabric I've been using to, to sew these pages together. And I don't want a super, super tall strip or wide strip. I just want, can I tear that? There we go. So would that be too wide? The hard part I think would be to, to make sure the pages line up. That is something that, yeah, that would be hard because normally I'm sewing the pages onto one piece of fabric and I just run my sewing machine in a straight line. With this, I'm gonna have to sew it to two different strips. I could do that though. I think the thing to do would be to sew at the top and the bottom instead of going all across the top and then all across the bottom. I wonder if I'm making sense. I think I am, maybe. We'll, I think it'll start to make more sense as we actually do it. So then, let's just look at this. If all of these were stacked up and we have the fabric running across, see, that's what it's gonna look like, except we're gonna have stitching across here, which I think will be really amazing. I could also stitch that by hand, which would be really amazing. So let's go ahead and cut another strip of fabric and let's see if we can get this to work. One more thing I'm gonna do, I want the book to be able to stand on a shelf and it's not going to with these pieces hanging down at the bottom. So I'm gonna cut all of this part off even with the page. Now the tops, I better make sure I'm cutting the right, yeah. The tops I'm gonna leave long for now because they can be really fun to add charms and things to. Whew. I would hate to cut my finger like that. Okay, I've got two pieces of fabric the same size. 
And let's put these pages in the order that I want them in the book. I think I want this one in the front. It says Poetic Rust. I have some artwork too that I want to use. That's going to be pretty because you can see behind it. I might go ahead and sew this in place. Oh my goodness, I just had a crazy idea. I was just about to set up the tripod and put it on the sewing machine. I need to list some of these safety pins. And I started thinking I could I could just set this up as a like a test a test drive. <laughs> you know what I mean? I could use safety pins to put all of these signatures in place. And, oh, I like those two pages together. And I like that. That, I do like the black dots with that. Love that. And, there. I like, see how you can flip the pages around as well? So I do a lot of the decorating of the pages before I start putting them into the book, but you can do it either way. If I, okay, so let's lay these down here. That gives us plenty of space on each side of this strip. And this is gonna be, I love this primitive look. This is gonna be primitive for sure. So wait a minute, let's stand this back up. I shouldn't have laid the whole stack down. I'm just gonna lay down this part to be kind of even. I'm going to take a couple of safety pins. I wonder if it would be easiest to do it from this side or the outside. Let's see if that went through both layers. Whoa! There we go. And it did. And then let's put one at on the bottom strip of fabric. You know, don't worry about being too precious with your junk journals. I think you'll be a lot happier if you relax. Oh, I didn't get that all the way through the fabric. If you just relax and enjoy the the creative process, that's, that's what I have figured out about myself. Now, I might have pinned that too high. I did, so let's bring that one down. And maybe this is telling me that it's gonna be easier to pin by looking from this side. What if I pinned from the outside? And we could see all these safety pins. What if I put safety pins on the top, on the outside, and what if? That's, I say that a lot, I think. Actually, I think it might be easier to do it from the outside. Now with the safety pins, they don't have to stay here. I can use these to come back. I could go back and sew, and this is gonna hold it in place. There is no one right way to make a book. So let's pin this one from the inside. I'm being kind of careful because I don't wanna stick myself. I've gotta to work tomorrow and I don't wanna have a big, cut or something. I work, I do a lot of physical work. I know I've said that before, but the last thing I need is to have an injury that won't let me lift or package things or whatever. I turned the camera off for just a minute so that I could go ahead and, and pin these into place. And this is what it looks like. I, I think this is really cool. Now it looks like like maybe I could do a better job. There's some puckering right there with the fabric, which I don't really care for that. So let's fix that while I'm, while I'm talking. So this shows you a little bit, kind of what I have in my mind about the structure of the book. There, that's a little better. That's gonna be so primitive. And then what I was thinking, so we're gonna put this in between the two covers and we are going to glue the strips into place first so that they have an anchor. And then we're gonna glue either the fabric or the paper on top of that. 
which I think would really work. And we're gonna have a nice, grungy, junky, truly junky junk journal. Stand this up, and if I go ahead and do this, uh, this means that anything else I do to the outside of the cover is gonna have to happen with all the pages inside. So you need to think about things like that. I typically just go for whatever feels right in the moment, and a lot of times that is the way unique art is created because you get to a point where you have to figure out how to get something done outside of what is considered normal or easy or standard or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and glue these strips into place. that in a little closer. Stand the strips are running sort of funny. Uh, and I know that happens when you're working with stuff like that. That's why I originally was thinking it was going to be kind of hard to sit down at the sewing machine and sew equally to two strips of fabric, you know, the top and the bottom. Now, if I can pick this up without messing up the strips, look at that. That is pretty cool. We need to make sure. So I would definitely want to keep this, this space just like it is. I like those safety pins sticking out. And it is that is going to be so awesome. And it's okay if some of the pages are a little bit, a little bit crazy. I knew when I was making this that some of the pages were a little bit taller and might end up being taller than the, the cover in some places. This is a combination of tacky glue and Elmer's glue because it is what I have right now. I also have the PVA glue, the pH neutral that I use a lot on my paper art, the actual pages. But for this, and I don't mind using the white glue for things like this. I think you just have to make sure you get enough and get it out to the edges and, you know, so that you're not going to have ridges of, of paint. I think it dries better too if it's just evenly put on. And you know what? This is, this is a work in progress. It's an experiment. We're going to see how it turns out. We can always add more glue around the edges. What I did was measure the inside of the pages and then I cut a piece of fabric to exactly that size. So that's going to be the inside cover. I did do a little bit of raveling or unraveling there at the top. Oh, almost put the wrong side down. So let's lay this here. I wanted this where it's been cut with the uh, pinking shears. This was a sample piece and it was already like that. And I do like the looks of that. So I kept that. I think I need more, more glue here. I have some fabric glue. I do use that sometimes, but again, for this, I just, I'm going to stick with this. I feel like sometimes with the fabric glue, I get sort of some stiff ridges and it seems like it does some spotting. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing. I wish I had tacky glue. We're going to see, though, how this works. We're just going to see. So for right now, I'm not, there's a lot of glue under here. We're just going to leave this for a while. I have some things that I need to go take care of. And I'm going to leave the pages standing just like this. I'm going to leave the fabric here to dry. It actually doesn't feel look at that that is really pretty awesome I'm liking this a lot even with just the safety pins so let's let that dry before we pull on that at all see we can actually even move the fabric around at this point okay what is that that piece is turning under a little bit I need to fix that right now Ooh, I like it 
too. I like it. And wait until we come back with other layers and glue, and it's just going to be amazing. All right, I will be back with this journal. There's a lot more to do. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.